Wow, that was beautiful. Amen. Thank you, Emily and Kylie, for the wonderful music. That is a very beautiful song. Well, once again, I'd like to welcome you today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Nice to see all my brothers and sisters. And just another special warm welcome to any guest we have. Before I begin, I'd kind of like to have a little quick word of prayer here again. Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity. I pray that everyone here receives a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Some of you may know me real well. And there are a few that do know me real well, but there may be someone here that doesn't know too much about me. Well, I'm Tony Uding. My wife uh, looks like they left. Uh, my wife, Kathy, and my daughter, Josie. And my daughter, Josie's three years old. And Kathy and I have been married for about 10 years. Um, about 10 years ago, I attended a, a Bible college for evangelism and uh, done a little core call porter work back in the day. Very interesting work. I'm not a salesman. I kind of realized that. So, all right. Uh, topic today I'm speaking about eight reasons why to be a Christian. Title's kind of you think, well, how's this for me? I am a Christian. Well, it kind of reminds you and gives you hope of why you're a believer. We live in a world of pleasure. The majority of people have attitudes that revolve around me, 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 or I, I, I. People are constantly seeking something. Usually they are seeking money, entertainment, immature relationships, or they find some form of appetite. And then we have the biggest mystery of all. Death. And to begin, I'm going to tell you a, a little story about a niece of mine. My niece, Amy Uding, was born in 1979 to my brother Jim. She grew up a nice, outgoing, beautiful girl. She loved pizza. She liked going to the movies. But the most interesting thing about Amy was that she wanted to work. She was 16, and in fact, she had gotten a job at the Dairy Queen in Blair, Nebraska. It was a town about 10 miles from her home. It was Friday night, and Amy had just received her very first paycheck. She hopped in her 1981 Chevy Citation and began her journey back home to Decama, Nebraska. About five miles south of Decama, there was a semi-tractor in front with a dump truck trailer and it had stopped in the road. Amy came up behind this trailer not realizing that it was stopped. And she proceeded to try to miss the tractor trailer 
by going in the other lane. And as she did this, unfortunately, the tractor trailer turned in front of her. Amy did not survive. Amy had no idea that she would pass away that day, and her family didn't either. What a tragedy, only 16 years old, and her life was gone. Do you or I know when we are going to die? Of course not. No one knows. We know not the day or the hour. Because of death, it is, I believe it's important that you and I should have a relationship with the Lord, our Jesus Christ. So today, I want to share with you eight reasons why to be a Christian. And keeping in mind, this is also for believers. All right. Reason number one. You can either turn, to your turn in your Bibles to the text, or he'll have them up on the screen. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 53. 1 Corinthians 15, fifty through 53. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment... In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. The dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Wow. That is awesome. You know, today with a world full of movies, this sure beats all those fantasy movies, don't it? Reason number two. Let's go see what else. We turn to Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. Does it stop there? No. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Wow. Don't you want that? I mean, we get immortality in which we could fly around. What a wonderful gift. You know, we always get gifts. Sometimes they're small, you know. We could have a choice, you know, and say, hmm, I don't like this gift, but here's a wonderful gift. Reason number three why you should be a Christian. Turn to Revelation 21, 3, and 4. Oh, this is one of my favorites. 
Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Hmm, that's interesting. You know, I've done a lot of hospital visiting, and you know what's going to be the most wonderful thing? There's not going to be a single hospital in heaven. Some people can, you know, handle hospital work, but I cannot. Reason number four. Let's go to Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. PowerPoints I'm going to show a little bit, but I've decided I'm going to start a little earlier. Because he says, starting in verse 17, For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in which I create, for behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be heard no more in her, nor the voice of crying. I'm going to skip to verse 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect, shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. Wow, there's going to be joy and peace. What do we have down here? You know, we have joy and peace down here, but we also have all the other bad characteristics. All right, first four, I just gave you four reasons. If you notice, they were kind of dealing with what God gives us. He gives us a gift. The rest of the reasons kind of deal with while we're living here on earth. Why should we be a Christian? Let's turn to Proverbs 8:17. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Hmm. You're getting love. Also, if you go to Mark 12, let's go to Mark 12.
Mark 12, 30 and 31 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, and there is none other commandment greater than these. Reason number five, you will be loved, and you will love others. You'll find true love. Okay, reasons number six. Reason number six. Turn our Bibles to John 10. John 10, 8 through 10. It says, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I, Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So being a Christian, you can have an abundant life. All right. That was reason six. Reason seven. Let's turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 28. And this is a very common scripture, so I'm sure a majority of you have heard this. and kind of wondering why I'm saying it, but I'll explain a little. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. And lo... I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Well, reason number seven, we'll form good relationships. Why is that? We're going to be doing some work, aren't we? And I imagine to teach anybody, you've got to make friends with somebody. So look at there. You'll, you'll form good relationships by being a Christian. And who knows, if God calls you to be a missionary, guess where you get to go? All over the world. Tell me that ain't fun. I mean, I'd love to go to Australia. Oh, man. I may or may not. We'll see. I'm hoping. All right, last but not least, reason number eight. Reason number eight of why to be a Christian. Go to Matthew 6. Matthew 6. And I've kind of added verse 31. It says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and some of it? All of it. All these things shall be added unto you. So by being a Christian or becoming a Christian... What will God do? Supply all your needs. We really only have three of them. What? Food, clothing, and shelter. 
And that's not very hard for him to supply. We may make it kind of hard or put a burden on ourselves, but God will supply it. Well, I have just proclaimed eight reasons why to be a Christian. Remember, I told you earlier that people are seeking money, entertainment, Immature relationships and appetite. Well, when you're a Christian, you have just the right amount of money. Sometimes people can be rich, but that's what God equated them and allowed them to have. They're doing, whether we're rich, mediocre, poor, middle class, He provides the right amount. Entertainment. You'll have good entertainment. One I like is you could possibly get to travel around the world. That's pretty good entertainment if you ask me. You get to see a lot of different things, discover new things. Love. You'll have plenty of love. And also there will be that healthy appetite. You'll want good things. And the best news about being a Christian is that there is a gift. Everybody likes a gift. And it's waiting for you. And we all know what it is. Eternal life. Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Starting at verse 24, goes through 26. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Christianity is not about being or feeling good. It's not about how good you need to be. I'm going to read a little excerpt from a, a book called Steps to Christ. The same divine mind that is working upon the things of nature is speaking to the hearts of men and creating an inexpressible craving for something they have not. The things of the world cannot satisfy their longing. The Spirit of God is pleading with them to seek for those things that alone which can give peace and rest, the grace of Christ, the joy of holiness through influences seen and unseen our Savior is constantly at work to attract the minds of men from the unsatisfying pleasures of sin to the infinite blessings that may be theirs in Christ to all these souls who are vainly seeking to drink from the broken sinisters of the world, a divine message is addressed. Let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. You who in heart long for something better than this world can give, Recognize this 
as the voice of God to your soul. Ask him to give you repentance, to reveal Christ to you in his infinite love, in his perfect purity. In the Savior's life, the principles of God's law, love to God and man, were perfectly exemplified. That's powerful. 2 Corinthians 6 2. Second Corinthians 6 2 says, For he says, I have heard thee in the time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have succoured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time, not later, it's now. And behold, now is the day of salvation. Joshua 24, 15. In closing, Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But, as it my hope that you say in your house this very thing. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you're already a Christian, we still have to do repentance. The Apostle Paul says what? I die daily. So each and every die each and every day, we must do what? Choose. We must die daily. We must choose to serve the Lord. And believe me, sometimes it's not always that easy. Also, if someone here is not a Christian, if there's someone here who's not a Christian, I'd like you to read this next text from Acts 2. 36 through 38. It says, Therefore all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And what did Peter say? Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So for a non-Christian, it's all the easier it is. All you have to do is repent. And qualification number two, be baptized. Let us turn to the hymn number 633. Let's turn our hymnals to 633. Let's stand together as we sing 633 when we all get to heaven. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a 
place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all close our eyes. Lord, we thank you so much for your word because it gives us and tells us what you can give to us. And Lord, most of all, that you are our creator. Lord, we can be happy. We can be joyful because of all the things that you give to us. And Lord, I just ask that you will continue to help us each and every day to make the choice to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> May God's grace go before you, may his love enfold you, may his mighty arms uphold you, protect you till we meet again. Call